Where are you from? Houston. What's it like over there? It's pretty nice. I mean, a lot of business. It's very too much going. So really active from an economic standpoint, metropolis. It's very industrial. I've been to I've been to Houston. Um, I remember I went to work um some ifa ceremonies in Dallas, and you know my my uncle Babarito one time said, "Hey, there's a a Santo ceremony or an Orisha ceremony in Houston that you're gonna work with me." And I'm like, "Okay," and he's like, "Uh, you know, we, we leave tomorrow morning." I didn't know it was five hours away. So the one thing I noticed about Texas was is that everything's far. Like there's new highways everywhere. Like it's you're in the car a lot, you know, and everybody's going 80 miles an hour. So right. Houston was great though. Lots of barbecue, lots of really nice people. I really liked Texas. You know, what was it like growing up there? I mean, were you originally from Houston? I grew in Houston all my life. You know, so it's how can I say it? it's just normal. You know, a lot of Hispanic, a lot of Mexican people. Nice. So you see a lot of things going in there, like uh, just partying and stuff like that. But anything out of the ordinary, anything hectic that you saw growing up that you know most people might not see. You see a lot of uh, like a little bit of Mexico in Houston a lot. You know, like brujeria, like stuff like botanicas and stuff like that. Nice. So you see a lot of those kind of stuff in the Hispanic community. Um, what are some of the things you're seeing? Because I remember one time I went to San Antonio and, you know, a big thing over there was the Santa Muerte. Do you see a lot of it in Houston as well? You see that a lot in Houston. I think they, that's what they do. They don't do a lot of uh, Santeria and stuff like that. They do more of Santa Muerte. As soon as you walk in into a Botanica, the first thing you see is Santa Muerte. And has it always been like that? Like since you can remember? Yeah. yeah. It's always been like that. Like, all you see there, you know, you walk in and you see stuff like that. So from your understanding, what is the Santa Muerte? Santa Muerte, from my understanding, I mean, I have a, I had a tia who passed away. She was into a Santa Muerte. Okay. And uh, she told me something that you make you very selfish. You know, you ask for it and she's get, she's going to give you everything, but you had to just keep it to yourself. Something like that. So I, I look at it like with fear because the way I saw it on her, you know, it was very selfish. You know, she just, all she could pray and do is for her. You know, like she was, according to what I see, the muerte gives, give you everything what you want, but uh, it can, it's just for you. That's really I'm interesting. Selfish. Yeah, it's really interesting because I have heard that it's a very prominent, based like um interaction with her you promise things you get what you want you get what you're supposed to give um so was your tia like an espiritista was she she um she would read cards you know, like and uh stuff like that my dad too you know he there uh i have a lot of my family that they, they uh very spiritist you know so she was into that you know reading cards i don't know she was like she would never read it to the family. She would just read it to, to her friends and stuff like that. Now, spiritually in Mexico, were these alternative things um, seen commonly? Like, even though maybe we were, like, Catholic on the outside, um, you know, what were, like, the, was, like, within the Santa Muerte, was, like, Espiritismo very popular, or maybe, like, Shamanismo? Like, were those things you'd see? In Mexico? Mexico, Houston. Mm, no. I see a lot of... Uh, Catholic stuff as well, you know, like Santos and Jude and stuff like that. But uh, growing, I never seen nothing of, you know, like Santeria and stuff like that or or reach us and stuff. Mm -mm. So being somebody that's lived in Houston your whole life, yes. at what point did you start seeing more like Santeria and Ifa things come onto the scene? Really, it was like two years ago, I want to say Wow. I walk into a store uh, in Galveston. I'm familiar, yeah. And Galveston, you know, it's like an hour from Houston is mm -hmm. where we got the beach. Yeah. And uh, it caught my attention. Uh, Jemaya called my attention. I didn't know who she was. But it just it caught my attention. And uh, I started doing 
research. That's how I start noticing about Santeria. I, you know, her image. It was a not an image, a, you know, like a statue mm -hmm. of Jemaya. And then I questioned the girl, you know, at the register. I'm like, hey, what is this for? And she's like, oh, she's the goddess of the ocean. I'm like, really? And she's like, yeah, you should take it. You know, it calls your attention. And ever since then, two years ago, things changed. You know, I started getting more involved. I'm trying to find out about what is it about, you know, like, what is Jemaya? And that's how I got into where... Now I, I find out more stories of um, Santeria in Houston because of uh, when Jemaya caught my attention. But when I was growing in Houston, all I was seeing it was Santa Muerte or, you know, stuff like that with Tonicas with uh, Catholic stuff, like Nino de Atocha and stuff. Now, before delving more into Jemaya, did you notice that the Santa Muerte was being used for negative things? I can feel it. Family, and when I walk to the botanica, you can feel something negative, you know, and that never caught my attention, which is weird, you know, because I would walk into the store and I would just feel like what's happening, and I would just have to walk out the, the botanica, so because I felt something negative, I don't know why, uh, but I I didn't feel fear, I just feel like something heavy in me. Yeah, I remember when I went to San Antonio. Um, wonderful place, by the way. Best Mexican food I've ever had in my life, personally. Um, but I remember there were two experiences that really stuck out to me with that uh, entity. Um, I went to a botanica to, you know, perform some services for the owner and a couple of his clients. And he had this Santa Muerte that was literally like, I don't know, eight feet tall, ten feet tall. But she was sitting on a throne and she had the Aztec calendar um in her arms right and it was the most impressive thing to me it was so beautiful to me and you know i'm asking questions because i like to educate myself and you know they were able to explain that the santa muerte is an aztec goddess um you know that comes now in the form of the grim reaper but um she's kind of like a ancestral mother right um you know she gives she takes she's serious and I'll never forget, one night I, I stood at that Wotanika where they prepared some conditions for me because we had a very early day the next day. And spiritually, I felt like I saw her. And it didn't necessarily resemble what's being portrayed now, but it was kind of a similar archetype. But all I remember was like this chilling calm, you know, when I was kind of looking at this shadow. Um, and I'll never forget, there was another experience when we were in San Antonio and we were visiting a woman's home. And she didn't have a very large home. But I remember when I walked in and looked to the right, she was initiated in the Santa Muerte. And she had this huge skeleton in a wedding dress where she had her cards and her agua and stuff like that. Like, you can smell the copal in the air, which I personally love. And um, I just remember looking like, wow, you know, this is really out here. You know, this, and you look the same way. A bunch of LA in everybody's house you go to texas and you look in people's houses they have like a santa muerte you know so i always found that very impressive um but what about yemaya um really stuck out to you because ironically it ended up being your guardian orisha and who yes. ultimately brought you in was her so what, what did you notice about her that intrigued you was it the colors was it the, her being like a motherly figure like i don't know you just call my attention like i'm the type of person you know whatever calls my attention i grab it so I feel that I'm very spiritist, you know, and um, uh, the color wasn't because she she didn't have blue on it. It was the uh, bronze or what is it called? You know, the, those statues are like brown. OK, yeah. 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 Like copper almost. Yeah. Copper, yeah. There you go. So really what caught my attention that she had something around her. I don't know, like like calling, you know, like mm -hmm. she's calling you. Yeah. And I think that's what caught my attention. I think there was something going on the middle of that time you know with my life and i think i felt like you calling me so i'm like okay let's give it a try so. interesting yeah and and the orishas are like that i remember the first time i saw a statue of la caridad de cobre mm -hmm. um i don't know what it was she really called my attention but not to the point where i really focused on her but she was always kind of around mm -hmm. and then when she came out my guardian orisha i said wow you know that energy has kind of been around me this whole time um, you mentioned, you know, spiritual DNA within your family, people having gifts. 
Um, what were some of your experiences as a kid where you realized, like, hey, there's something a little bit different about me, you know, spiritually? Oh, I had a lot of experiences. You know, when I was a kid, I would feel like I could see people seeing me, you know, like, as a kid. And then uh, when my grandma passed away, I looked up, and I was I saw some weird stuff on the sky. And it was just like I noticed a lot of things when I was a kid that – Dreams, you know, I had dreams about people coming to me and putting stuff like, uh, like an older lady, like she would put like a cruise on me. You know, I would be sitting down and, and like ceremonies. I would have a lot of dreams of people having ceremonies with me, and since a kid. And then I will remember that when I was a kid, I, I, I could see stuff, but now that I grew up, I cannot see people, you know, like spirits. But as a kid, I, I do remember I would see weird stuff. So that's when I start uh, noticing there there was something unnormal on me. And I would tell my mom, I'm like, hey, uh, I feel weird. And they started noticing that as well. You know, that I would say things that I would out of nothing come out and, and it would happen. And so what was what was mom's response to that? Or your parents' response my parents to that? Respond to that, they're like you have a tienes un don, you know, in Spanish, they're like, you have something. In a you. gift, yeah. A gift, I'm um, like, especially because of my dad, you know, they feel that, and my dad, his, his family, you know, they're very, they do a lot of stuff like that. What I part of Mexico are they from? From uh, Chihuahua. Okay. Chihuahuas. So, that's where uh, all my parents is from, you know, so I think um, that's what I'll come from, I, I, I believe, you know, but my mom told me that when she was pregnant, that a lady told her, you know, whatever you got in there is is uh, is very gifted. When I started telling my mom, you know, of my dreams and stuff like that, she's like, you know, it's weird because somebody told me that when when you know when she was pregnant, they told her that that whatever was there, you know, was gifted. So she didn't. She always believed in me, you know, especially because of what they told her. Have you ever visited Juarez? Yes. What's it like? I mean, because it has there, such a reputation. The reputation over there is just like a normal city. I mean, yeah. you just go there. There's a lot of mountains. Uh, just people, you know, normal. I mean, uh, if you're not looking for trouble, you won't get in trouble. But if you're selling drugs or you're looking for drugs, then that's when you start looking for trouble. But there's a lot of killing over there, you know, like for females and stuff. But uh, when I go there, I don't see it because I mean I just go visit family and I think I think if you go looking for trouble you're gonna find it. So what is is just you you go there and whatever you see on the news you're looking for it you know because the news talk a lot about things happening a lot of killing and then you get there and you don't see none of that. So you actually it's it's very underground. It's not like the movie Sicario where we're just no. walking around and everybody's getting blown up, no, right? No, no see it yeah and i go there very often and i don't see none of that yeah no that's really i think people such as yourself families from there you've been there very mm -hmm. much where you know propaganda sometimes kind of gets taken out of control and it keeps us from experiencing really great places mm -hmm. mexico was one of the best trips i've ever had um now mind you in a place like that where there is criminality even though it might not be visible they might do a good job about keeping it you know under wraps um, do you notice people in that lifestyle um, gravitating towards spirituality, like the Santa Muerte? Have you heard of like any interactions where they gravitate towards these kind of things to be able to do what it is that they want to do? Uh, in your experience, I have, uh, in my experience, I do have family, you know, that out there. I'm not, you know, it's not like I want to put them out there, but no, it, no, it, it, it is. They do have a belief of Santa Muerte, and they consider that, that that protect them to what they're doing over okay. there. So, yeah, I do see a lot of people over there in Juarez and in Houston. You know, you see a lot of people, they go to the La Santa Muerte to protect them to, to, to do what they're doing. So, Interesting. I do see that a lot. Wow. Now, you um being Catholic by birth, right, coming mm -hmm. up in your home, even though it was a very spiritual place, um, and apart from that being a gay man, um, what was it like growing up in the church and ultimately leading up to like confirmation? Like, what was it like when you realized, hey, 
this is my orientation, that this is my religion, this is, you know, causing a conflict. You know, what was that process like leading up to that? It was pretty tough because, yeah. you know, um, I was, I think, like 20, no, 22 when I did my confirmation. You know, okay. you, had, you, you, you know, you had to do uh, sacrament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did them as so, well, yeah. I was very older, you know, I was like 22, 23 oh. when I did it in Houston. And uh, when I was in that process, I was with a lot of fear. With a lot of fear because I hear, you know, in the religion of Catholic and Christians, you know, you could not be gay or you're not going to be accepted. Sure. So I, I went through the process of six months of class. I had to go to the class and all the time that I went to that process, I was going... And I wanted to talk to, you know, the the person who was giving the class, you know, mm -hmm. the, the teacher, you know, for, in order for me to give confirmation. I wanted to say it, but I kept it to myself. So that process was very tough for me because mm -hmm. I was afraid that to say, hey, um, I'm not going to get married the way talks, you know, they talk about the men and the female, right? Yeah. And they talked about stuff like that through the, through the classes. Mm -hmm. So it was very tough because I felt like I'm lying. Yeah. And I'm like, and to even, even when I did the, you know, how you go and confess, I didn't confess it because I was afraid that I was going to get kicked out of the church. Yeah. So it, it was very tough because I lied all the way to, to, um, to be able to get my confirmation because I, I was afraid to be told, get out. Yeah, especially when it's not your character, the idea of hiding something, especially something so dear, mm -hmm. um, such as your orientation, which, you know, obviously we identify with very heavily, I can only imagine. Um, you know, did you experience similar fears leading up to your initiation in Ifa? Yeah, I did. Why? Fears. Because the same thing, you know, uh, gay people, we get uh, a lot of rejects, you know, like, yeah. especially when we talk to men, you know? Yeah. So... Before I met you, you know, I did spoke to different Babalaos, you know, because I started getting very interested with when I find out about Yamaya, I was having dreams about her. I was having dreams about Oshon, even though I didn't know who they were, but yeah. I had dreams. And uh, so anyways, you know, I spoke to different Babalaos and I was like afraid to tell them, you know, about my orientation. At that time, I was now way older, you know, now, yeah, you're an adult. you know, after 20 more older and more older and i'm like you know what? it's time to be real with myself and i had it to just you know let the fear go at that time i was already in relationships you know with men and stuff like that so the fear was less but also i wanted to be accepted you know because this caused my attention a lot you know this religion caused my attention more than anything and i'm like okay i had to be true you know i had to be real with myself and uh, I was told, you know, you know, I talked to you, and you're like, hey, that doesn't have nothing to do with it. One of the uh, reading that I did with another person, it was not a Babalawa, it was another, like a Santera. Mm -hmm. She did tell me that my uh, ancestors were not nothing to do with Ifa, mm -hmm. and I had to go into a, the other route. Like the Muerte or Pitimo. Yes, that I didn't have to do Hena Ifa. Mm-hmm. And she told me that um, being gay was going to affect me at my job. So that there got me with fear. I'm like, oh, okay, you know, what about if I'm not going to accept it? But I didn't listen to her a lot. Mm -hmm. And I ended up talking to you and I told you, hey, can I go for it? Would I be accepted? Because, I mean, this is who I am. Yeah. Now, uh, Ifa was the first open religion. Ifa has never discriminated against anybody of the LGBT community. Um, everybody has a different space and function to fulfill, right? Like when we look at the Odu, and it, it's really unfortunate, but at one point within Ifa, at least within the Lukumi history, there was a point where um, homophobia was really ravaging our faith. And a lot of Awalawos weren't even giving the hand of Ifa to gay brothers and you know lesbian sisters, which obviously couldn't be any more unethical um, than what it is. Um, you know, but the Odu Owani Woche says that everybody is allowed to receive hand of Ifa regardless of orientation. Um, and I remember that conversation and it really is, I mean, you know, and it, it was authentic because here you are initiated today. 
um, with bigger plans and prospects within your spirituality. One of the first religions, if not the first, to allow the initiation of gay priests. Mm -hmm. um, and if anything, it's really enriched our faiths. But it's like everybody has a different role to play. Um, what was the difference with other conversations you were having with other priests that led you away from them? Were they actually saying, hey, I'm not going to be able to do it? Hey, that's not going to work. Did you ever get any pushback from any uh, any I other? Did. Oh, wow. I did. Uh, one of them put me on fear because, you know, I'm like, once you know you're gay, you're gay. And I, I yeah. and uh, one people I would told me, you know, uh, once you do the ceremony, if it pops that you, it, we're gonna, that you gotta be of our level, uh, you're gonna <laughs> turn to be, uh, we go he's gonna turn you straight. <laughs> and I'm like, Good okay, Lord. I'm like, nothing else has like, been able I'm to like, do it. Never yes. mind. I'm like, <laughs> and I got close with him, you know, because yeah. uh, he did some stuff, some 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 work for me because yeah. I, I was believing him. But then I'm like, when he got to that part, you know, when he was like, but you know what? If you do the ceremony and you find, you know, Urula say that you're gonna be a uh, lao, he's gonna turn you straight. And I'm like. <laughs> So I push back on them. I'm like, nah. Yeah. Well, I mean, when we talk about um, being gay. It's not something that needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. You know, Ifa has been able to recognize, at least when it's properly interpreted, that this is, it's it being, your orientation is as second nature to you as the color you prefer. Like, if I like the color blue or what have you. And you, Orumila, um, recognized this initially. So it's a little unfortunate to hear that. And I, I know it's happening, but to hear it come from you and to be able to actually share on this. We're not some other faith. We should not be trying to fix people. With things or don't need to be fixed because there's really nothing broken, you know, and it's none of anyone's business. So like, like we've spoken about before, I'm sorry that happened, but I, I think this conversation is going to help quite a bit to let people know within certain aspects of the faith, it's, it's really a non-issue whatsoever. So we decided to move forward with the hand of Ifa. We're excited. Um, what was it like? You know, as you're going through the hand of Ifa, you're in a safe situation. Like, what what effect did it have on you as you're going through it? What's going through your mind? You know, fear, anticipation. You know, I um, going through the process of it. Mm -hmm. I was very nervous because yeah. of you know what I was told in my reading, and that a lot of things could you know that you're gonna be push your character. You're gonna be you know, a lot of things could happen either negative or positive, right? So I was thinking of like the negatives. I was thinking was gonna like I was already going through a lot in my life when I was trying to go for a five because I, I felt I had to go, you know, and get it. But it was fears, like it was a lot of fears through the whole process. And whenever I finally, you know, the time came, I was like happy. I'm like, oh finally, you know, nothing happened. But yeah. I was with a lot of fears because I was thinking, I'm like, hopefully I don't lose my job. Hopefully I don't lose this and this. You know, I yeah. was like, I was thinking I was going to lose something. Yeah. And uh, thank God at that moment I didn't. When in reality, you're, you're coming to gain something. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a big difference with us is fear. It's not that fear doesn't exist. Everybody experiences fear. But what, what should be happening is that if I'm initiating you, I should empowering you empowering you and educating you to the point where we ignore the fear and we we develop this courage right you know there's there's uh there's a saying within ifa that there's no fear in the heart of the leopard or rumila was the leopard you know there was nothing that he wasn't willing to confront because he knew that with ifa he would come out okay right um before we get into the revelation of your guardian angel you, you started having revelations yourself, like a lot of dreams and things like that. Yeah. What were some of the things you were seeing on the other side? I was having a lot of dreams with um, Orichas. You know, mm -hmm. I had a dream with uh, Jemaya Oshun uh, before I met you, you know, because I was, I had a friend who was kind of like guiding me and telling me, hey, look, start praying because she could tell that I was spiritual and the right people come to you. So I, I did what she did, you know, with her advice. And I started praying and stuff like that. And that's how I started having dreams. You know, I had a dream with uh, Yemaya, like with the ocean and stuff like that. Before getting into um, Mano de Orula, I had a dream with her. But before that, I had a dream with Oshun. And I'm like, uh, I dream her 
like somebody giving me pineapple and, and weird stuff, you know, like a ceremony. And I think I told you about it. I'm like, I had a ceremony, and then you told me, well, guess what? I'm a son of ocean. Yeah, ironically, yeah. And I'm like, when I met you uh, through the through the reading, it touched me a lot because you were the first person who told me a lot of things. It was like, wow, you know, you know, it's true. You know, like I learned that. You know, I had so many readings before, and no one really told me what I was really going through. And then with that dream. Uh, more like a confirmation you know it confirmed like okay this is the the pattern that i'm gonna start going because the dream told me you know shown and then you telling me that you're son of her so i'm like okay right away i started looking at positive and said i'm like okay so because i i was told by uh santera that uh that orichas don't exist and so i was like okay if i'm um and i'm just dreaming you know sometimes i had second my gift yeah you know because i'm like okay and i'm just dreaming things because that's what i'm calling for yeah but no what i dream you know things actually happen you know i um you were telling me you know what who was my you know my son i didn't want to say it because i was with fear and i was already going through a lot of negative things before so i'm like you know what i'm not gonna say nothing i'm gonna see if they can tell me what i already knew yeah and there you go and it came out like yeah. that. And, and you, it's on the first round. On the first round, yeah, it's first go. And um, the interesting thing about the children of Yemaya is you guys really know yourself. Like, that same situation that you just uh, re- related to us, countless of your God siblings who are children of Yemaya had those kind of dreams before they, um, they were revealed. And these are people that some of them didn't know about the religion until the day they received because their partner was coming in and they're like, well, I'll do it too, you know? And I think that's even more of a confirmation for you because being that you don't come from an Afro descendant, you know, situation, look at the revelations you're having because that's the thing a lot of people don't realize is we don't know who you were in the past life. You could have been a pre, you were a priest of Yemaya in the past life because that's the only way we get reincarnated as children of that Orisha, you know? So with all that being said, how did you feel when Yemaya was finally formally revealed? I feel very positive you know i wanted to cry at that moment sure. because i'm like wow you know it is her you know i'm like and in my head whenever you said it i'm like wow you know i felt like you were kind of studying my my head I'm yeah like, that's what orula does yeah. i'm like he's he read my mind because I, I i was afraid to you know in the ceremony what was happening i'm like yeah. should i open it and yeah. and like there you go it's her so i was excited about it um and then I started noticing that more confirmations, you know, because I would start doing prayers to her or putting offerings to her based on what I would see on YouTube. And and she was responding to me. You know, she she always, like, at a short time that I knew about that Oricha, she had not let, you know, never left me alone. And uh, that's how I know I'm like, she's the person I'm, I'm dreaming now I'm dreaming a lot. Uh, I had a dream with uh, Obatala. And before I dreamed him, I was at a botanica. And uh, I saw an image, you know, like a poster. And the guy took for it. You take. And I took him and I had a dream. But with him, it was more heavier. Because with him, he I woke up. And I woke up and I saw a, a shadow. That that uh, Oricha was like a female and a man, and then I did a research, and then I heard about a thing. He he goes like that up. I think. Yeah, he's androgynous. Like he kind of, you know, he he first manifested as masculine, but as you know, things started unraveling. There were other aspects present at the time that got uh, assimilated into his ideas. So that's why you have the female and ma- the male paths with him. So yeah. So that's where I'm like, okay, I was. Again, confirm. I'm like, you know what? Uh, all this is for me. And when I find out about that she was my mother, I'm like, wow. I had to continue going for it. I'm not gonna give up. I'm not gonna give up. And you know, now I'm here. You know, excited about the new, the new step coming up. Excited and nervous at the same time. Yeah. So what? 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 Um. What really? 
to now possibly become an Odisha priest? Like, you know, because some people receive hand to be fine. They're like, hey, I'm good. You know, what's going through your mind as you're like, why you want to do this? Besides what Orula said, like within yourself. I want to do it because I, I'm going through a lot. And um, I've been crying so much these last months, months, you know. And I feel like she's calling me like, and I'm like, I had a grudge. And then money's coming to me at the same time. And I was like, I need my mother. You know, I feel so alone that she called my attention. And I think, you know, like more money kept coming. And and I said it to myself, I know I'm not prepared because, um, you know, I, I through the process after Hannah Vifai, you know, I, I went through other ceremonies, right? Yeah. And I'm like, wow, you know, it's, it's getting too heavy on me and more heavy and more heavy. And I've been told, you know, be patient and don't take it too fast, you know, sure. because, you know, I don't know nothing about the religion. I'm still learning. And I feel that I know I'm going too quick on it, but something's calling me at the same time. Uh, a lot of tears in me. And I feel that, like, I'm like, I need her. And I think if I need her, if it, if it was not meant for me, I would not have got the money, you know. And I feel that there was a sign because... Things got better for me at work, you know, and I'm like, okay, I had to go for it. I, I promised myself if it was for me, I was going to see the 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 float coming, you know, money float and, and the blessings. And I started noticing it, and, and I think that's the reason why. Well, both things have to be taken into account, right? You want to take things slow and learn at a pace, mm -hmm. but you also have to trust your instincts, you know, and, and trust um the ideals of, of your elders you know mm -hmm. sometimes we when we're getting started in this we're trying to achieve this monumentous goal of crowning we doubt ourselves we're like am i going to be able to live up to this am i going to be able to fulfill am i ready do i deserve it like all these things start storing through the mind and the answer is yes you know if you're asking yourself those questions it's because you have the maturity and character to deserve um this medicine which is really what Odisha is, you know, um, as you're working towards these steps now and, you know, possibly, you know, achieving this, this new goal, what do you want to do with it? You know, as now, let's say the day after tomorrow, your Ignacio said, initiated priest of Yemoja, what do you want to accomplish at that point? Um, I would see myself that I, I was here for a reason in this world, you know, and, um, for you know all this process of maybe five, I was already told that I was gifted, right? But that person took a lot. A family member took a lot of my money, you know, supposedly preparing me because I was gifted. So I never gave up. Now you know I got to admit, you know, about the, you know, this religion and all this stuff. So I always knew I had something on me. So now that through this process, I know I have a lot to learn. And uh, and I have a lot to respect now, and I look at it like um, as I'm growing, I'm gonna be able to do what I know that I'm gifted. I want to help, you know, because I feel that I can help because I have people coming to me, and I can you know see something that's happening to me. I feel like I'm gonna be like uh, like helping people, you know. I mean, I know I'm not God. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm going to become God or a santo, but I feel that um, that's going to give me, like, the green light to be able to help. Because if I was gifted with something, I want to go for it. But I have to learn before. Like, before I wasn't learning, I was just like, okay, you, you know, yeah, you're gifted. With this religion, it's a lot of beauty. You know, it talks about respect. It talks a lot of, a lot of beautiful things that first it, it makes you, it teaches you how to love yourself and protect yourself, you know, and respect. So um, I'm learning, and I think I'm going to be ready to 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 be able to help people because I, I, I feel that I'm gifted and and I want to prepare to to help others. Oh, beautiful, beautiful concepts. That has to be the first goal of the Olorisha or the Bawalao is to serve and assist. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we swear to do. Um, and, you know, the year in Hawaii, at least for me, was probably the worst year of my life. You know, no, no doubt about it. 
um, you find yourself alone. You find yourself kind of within your mind a lot. It's a pretty solitary process, you know. And um, I think one of the things um, that most would have benefited is that support system from your elders. You know, how important has it been up until this point and as you move forward to have that support system from your elders, but most importantly, your godmother? Oh, there's a lot, you know, so much, you know, she's been uh, a huge support for me, you know. Uh, I'm always, like, very thankful because um, when I was, you know, I, when I heard about this religion, Santeria, people talked about it really bad. Mm -hmm. And with Madrina, I've been learning, you know, like, a lot. You know, she's a big support because it's not the way, uh, when you hear the word Santeria or all this stuff, yeah, people think you just hurting, sacrificing animals or doing stuff that, I mean, it talks very bad. And it's not true, you know, because right now that I got to meet Madrina and and you, especially her, you know, she never gets me anything negative about the world, of how I should be. She's always giving me something positive. Yeah. So that helps me a lot because I used to be a different person. I would think uh, bad. And now having someone come to me. this is not the way you should do it this is you know and you get very surprised because they don't talk about brujeria yeah, oh correct. you know do this harm this person do this no she's always telling me some a positive thing you know so i mean like i'm very very like thankful that i met you guys and that i have marina because she's the i want to say she's the best because she's never had told me nothing even though i'm going through a lot she had never told me negative things like I grew, you know. Yeah, of course. I grew with a lot of uh, other uh, spiritual ways, you know, like uh, uh, other ways, you know, people who do Santa Muerte or, you know, with Catholic saints. It's other, you know, different kind of uh, spiritual stuff. You know, I don't want to talk bad about it, but with the Santeria and with Madrina, it's a lot of And it's not all about brujeria. It's about how to better yourself. So it has it has done a lot, you know, a lot of uh, positive ways of having someone older, someone with experience, you know, that can teach you. Don't you know? Just don't go the way you want to go for it. Definitely, no. That's that's the way the relationship should be. Because when you're going through that first year in Orisha, that's really your only friend. You know, uh, apart from your Orishas, if you have a relationship at that moment when you go in, your relationship, but really your elders are that support system because you have to get broken down to be built up again, right? So that usually provides the best results. Um, the Mexican people are wonderful, in my opinion. I love them dearly. Um, I think they have a lot of great values. Um, you know, how influential um, has been being Mexican been on your life like the the what 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 has it represented to you like the virtues you've learned qualities you know how influential has your culture been on how you've uh progressed as a man mm, it has a lot to do you know like uh with my dad you know he's very you know like very tough you know but he's he he teach us a lot you know to 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 always uh grow with respect and to always have your own place and you know to you know just being a mexican i think it, it helps a lot also your dad you know your dad is has a lot of a lot of um to 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 be in in the part of uh of loving being who you are uh, as a mexican you know because us mexicans you know and i, I think not only mexican latinos you know we work hard yeah. for what we want and uh my dad is one of those people you know who worked hard for what he wanted and i think uh, that's the way i look at it you know um i i go based on like with my dad you know like you know i grew a lot with him and uh i think that's that's how i want to look at it like being a mexican you know it has a lot with the machismo yeah and it's like cuba in that regard you yeah. know it's a very paternal you know the man has certain qualities and values we work mm -hmm. we're the rock you know so it's it it, it transitions uh, quite a bit there now 
Um, are you noticing more Mexican people, whether it be in Mexico or in places like Texas or Houston, are they gravitating more towards IFA? No. Uh, the thing about Mexican people, you know, us Mexican people, like I was telling you, you know, we more into brujería. Yeah. People want to do a spell right away, you know, and they're like, or they, want do, they want to do amares. They want to do the short. They never look at their mistakes, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and that's the problem with us Mexicans, you know. Uh, I mean, not all of us, but you know, I want to say almost probably like an eighty percent, you know. You yeah. that's why when you go to those botanicas in Houston, all you see is people they don't even uh, respect the the religion of uh, the Santeria because they think about okay, I want a madre, I want this, I want that. And that's how I thought it was going to be. But when I met Madrina, because I think you had to be able to pick the right people. Sure. Because I think I found the right people because uh, I, I had never been treated like that. Where, okay, you know, let's do this, let's do that. You know, even though of all the things that I could be going through. Yeah. So Mexicans, that's the way they do a lot. You know, they, um, they don't want to go, they don't want to be told of what we wrong. And and they want to fix the other people, you know. They want to fix their their significant other. They want to do uh, revenge, you know. They want to get back even if they let them go from their job or somebody did them wrong, you know. They want to go on that route. They don't want to go on the route like the way I've been teach with you guys. And I think you know, it's not that I want to give you any credit, but you know way you guys do it, it really is a beauty because it, it teach you you know to be a better person not to go pay money to to do harm to, to destroy somebody because yeah. they want to get even so mexicans um they still don't see this religion as to be a better person they just want to go pay for a a job a spell yeah how do you think Santeria, Ifa, or any of these things could positively affect your community. Like you know, traffic, people where you're from. Like, how could Ifa positively affect it, or what? What could they gain from it? Affect them like in a bad way, or positively? Like, what I could mean, they learn from it? How I, could I, they grow they, from it? They, if they will, it will give them a lot of positive ways, if they find the right people. You know, I think. Um, that's why, like I told you, I want to learn so much because I think, especially in Houston, they we need people, a real people who's gonna help people because I think, you know, when people at my job or different places, you know, when they see this, they look at it like, oh, you sacrificing. They don't look at it with respect the religion for us Mexicans. Uh, this religion is, is just harming. They think that that's all we're doing. So I think uh, it affects a lot because they don't have the right, uh, how you want to say, like? Their, Idea? No, the right balalabos. Oh, okay, santeros, yeah, sure, professional. You know, professional. And I think that's what's affecting our community because they just want to go on a, like I, like I told you, they just want to pay for a job, but they don't want to help themselves. You know, and I think that uh, I had a lot of people because before um, me getting into into all this religion, people would come to me for like a, like they wanted me to do like a reading. I would not read cards, but I can I can see people and, and I would going on. I they would cry and tell me, hey, well, why are you telling me about me? I'm like, because that's what I want to help you. You coming to me because you want. You're crying about your ex or your husband. So the Mexican community, because they want to come to to any stuff like that, and they don't look at it like on a positive way. They just want to look at it as a uh, brujería. So it, it, the community, the Mexican community, they need to do more of a research and find the right the right people to come, because I think it has a lot of a lot of good stuff this religion has a lot of good stuff that it has not been thrown out they just think it's just brujeria when it's not 
how how important or how gratifying would it be for you to be um, a change within your community once you're an initiated priest of Odisha and once you set up your practice and really start attending to people, how gratifying would it be for you to be um, the trendsetter towards things that are more positive, you know? Mm, I wish that could happen, you know, uh, to make a change, especially... I told you, if before people would come to me when I wasn't prepared, I imagine myself now that I'm going to be prepared, I think it's going to be a lot of positive things, you know, because I'm I'm really, I got the right people, and I think there's going to be more people coming to me, you know, that I'm going to be learning more, because I, I, at this time, you know, I don't know it. I dream it, because yeah. it's always in dreams, you know. I, I, every time I, I'm going to go through a ceremony with you guys, first I dream it. <laughs> yeah. And it's weird, so... um that's the way I want to look at it. Like the positive way is like I'm going to learn. Come to me because I I I bring to people como paz tranquilidad yeah. when they come to me. So maybe now that I'm gonna have more knowledge, I think I I could probably have be a little a a good positive, you know, because people us Mexicans we have a good heart, and when people really come to them and really give them like a, what they really going through like when i came to you yeah that's when people feel it so you know i think we just need the right people out there and especially in houston now there's a lot of things going on in this country um you know whether it be the previous presidency the one going on right now what is it like being a mexican american man right now in this country like how do you feel do you feel accepted do you feel like there's a stigma especially places like Houston that are so close to, you know, Mexico. What is the vibe that you get as you go through life during the current, like, political climate? Like, do you feel welcome? Do you feel accepted? Do you feel... I do. I, I had always, since a kid, I had always felt accepted in this country. You know, um, yes, you know, I think there's a lot of discrimination. I think there's more discriminations, like, on our community with gays, you know, mm -hmm. I feel on that one, I feel more rejected than my race of being a Latino. Wow. I feel more refute, you know, I feel more negative parts on the gay and then being a Hispanic. Cause you know, now, now this country is more Latinos, you know, more yeah. and more. So I, I had never looked at it on that part, you know, where I have never been accepted. Um, and uh, I mean, like, I guess I'm very, you know, like, I'm always with a smile and everything. So everywhere I go, I accept. Always. So I, I never felt rejected in this country. I mean, never. I mean, the people who not reject, the people who reject you is your own community. The own wow. Latinos. Wow. You know, they hear you with an accent, like with mine. And the first thing they want to call you, hey, you're not from here. Go back to your country. Oh, God. That's your own your own community reject you, not the people from, because this country is full of immigrants from all different places. Yeah, it's who made it. So, yeah. Um, when with that question, all I can say is, our own people we need to stop doing that because we're the ones who are rejecting each other. It's not it's not the presidents. I mean, presidents that's just political, but yeah. they're not going to harm us. I think. Now you being someone that's been able to. Um, live your truth, be able to say with confidence, hey, this is who I am. What would you tell? Um, because if you went through it, you have to imagine there may be hundreds or thousands of young men and women who are living with that frustration of I'm gay, but I'm afraid of being rejected by my community, uh, my family, um, my friends. What advice would you give them to that young teenage boy who might have been going through what you were going through as far as building up the strength and courage to be himself? What would you tell him? patient uh, i think um uh, don't rush you know and don't harm yourself don't don't hurt yourself um all i can say be patient because um i mean being gay is gonna be tough and a lot of us you know it took me years to to accept myself I, wow. I think i think another thing that you had to do is accept who you are don't be afraid who you are love yourself and that's the first thing we had to do um don't don't do 
because you have a significant other and, and, and then say, okay, I'm ready to go the world. Yeah. First, um, my advice is love yourself and, and always think, you know, to respect yourself because if we don't respect ourselves, you know, it also affects us, you know, because sometimes, you know, in the gay community, you know, we, we are afraid because we're also some, some of the gay people we're some of, some are very feminine and that's why they're afraid. So uh, just accept who you are, and I think um, be patient, and I think uh, love yourself. Beautiful. Now, what would you say to those who are or were in uh, your situation of getting into the religion? What advice would you give to somebody who walked into that botanica, saw that statue, and is looking for options? What what advice would you give them? To do a, a good research. Don't just jump on on a lot of negative things you know because you're gonna be told a lot of bad things you know don't give up because if we as as soon as this religion call your attention it's gonna be there it's just it's just a matter of time that you find the right bible law and right, you know my nine you know the right team uh so i would tell them to to don't give up if you because i got a lot of negative feedback before getting into the religion but yeah. i didn't give up I was, again, patient, you know. So I would tell them, you know, do good research. And I think uh, listen to your heart. Uh, don't don't go based on what's happening in your life. If you're going through a lot of problems and you're like, okay, let me just jump into this person talks so good about how he helped his sons, you know, sons and stuff like that. Sometimes we go based on who's very popular. Don't go about, you know, who's popular or yeah. who has the most uh, views out there, you know, because don't go based on the people who, who, who talks a lot about themselves. Them, themselves. Yeah. Because uh, I think, uh, be careful. Also, uh, red flag people. You know, I, I noticed that before going into the religion, you know, there was one who told me, okay, yeah, just get your stuff and I, we do this process. It's going to be a three-day thing. And, um, He's just going to be him and some other people. And then, you know, do do a lot of research, but don't rush it and don't go with the person who's telling you, oh, look, this one's very popular. No, go. But I think before you do the decision, don't open your mouth too much as well. You know, when because that's what I did. I uh, I mean, I'm sorry to say, but when I came to you, I, I was more like private. I'm like, I'm not going to tell them. And those are my favorite because I love to give opportunity for the chain to talk yes. you know because that's when you have faith building moments of oh my god this is real because everybody has to have that moment to spend the rest of your life in this because he fathers forever but he shows forever so definitely i would second that and unfortunately within our community now there's a lot of narcissists mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who do think they're god mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who get a certain viewership or learn certain things and you know the humility goes right out the window and i'd say that the most characteristic thing of orula and the orishas was their humility having all the power in the universe and still having the patience to allow us to figure it out you know um how are you gonna feel once you're crowned yamaya what how do you think you're gonna feel i think i'm gonna feel what i'm looking for paz peace you know uh, uh, I did research about her, and that's what they said. That's what she is. You know, the water is the most peaceful thing. So yeah. I think that's what I'm looking for, and I feel that's what I'm gonna get. You know, I I'm excited but nervous, but uh, I've been crying and crying, and I went to visit you know the beach, and every time when I get there, I want to cry, and I can't. Something stops. So I feel that once I do that, I I feel that. I mean, it's going to be more, you know, more things that I'm going to learn. I think we're never going to stop learning, no matter how, how old are you. But at least I feel that I'm going I'm to feel more peace with myself, you know. Especially that it's going to be a lot that I had to learn. More, more about how I had to change myself. So I'm excited because that's why I told you this religion helps a lot. Because um, it's not about... I, it's showing out there is uh is a santeria santeria just the name of it is just a name but it's not like the way it sounds 
So I'm excited about it, and I feel that it's going to help me to be a better person for myself, not for others, for me. Well, you're as excited as we are. Mm -hmm. You've been a wonderful addition to this home, and the idea of you being exalted to that position of Olorisha, to be able to represent not only Yemaya, but the various demographics you represent, whether it's being Latino, whether it's being a gay gentleman, um, I think you're going to be able to shed a lot of light and provide a lot of positivity to your communities, all of them. And um, it's going to be a delight to see your progress. Yeah. So I just want to say congratulations as you move forward, Mihao, and you have Thank all of you. our blessings. And um, let's go ahead and put on these headphones to listen to that elevator music. Okay. Hello, guys. Oh, Phil, take it easy. I know this is your favorite part. <laughs> well, this was a very enlightening show. Oh, yeah, it Thank was you, fabulous. That was Definitely amazing. a bunch of things uh, that we haven't touched on before that I'm happy we did. Yeah, you can make sure to like and share this podcast. The show, the show has been having exponential growth, with, and we can't do it without you. So guess what Absolutely. time it is? Oh, man, elevator music. Let's give some shout-outs yes. to the special members of the Our Roots podcast family. Yes. And if you are unfamiliar with the family here, there's a little button right under this video that says join. Join. We have three different know. tiers, and each tier, different tier adds some extra perks for you. So let's give a shout out to some super fans here. Here we go. We have Katrina Allen. Katrina, hey. I am Jessina. Hey. Let's give a shout out to Kenya Hutton. Thank you. I want to give a shout out. Oh, the VIPs. We got Jada Rocks. Jada, thank you. We got Pink Door Divas. Pink. Charlemagne Clark. Love that name. Go Charlemagne. And this was a five-monther. Let's show some love to Miss Peer. Oh, thank you so much. A couple closing thoughts before we go ahead and disconnect, family. If you know somebody that could benefit from the membership program, please let them know. And if you're interested, please inquire at that link button that phil um just uh spoke about if you know somebody that would like to be on the podcast or even you guys as members that take advantage of that opportunity um ignacio is a member of the uh, program as well as a godchild in the house um so if you want to be on the couch and, and tell your story please do um this episode was sponsored by the elite team of lpt realty of which uh, miss erica poroye is uh the head real estate professional. If you have any questions about the market whatsoever, please reach out to us uh, or to her, better said. Um, the podcast is on all major platforms. Uh, we're growing exponentially. And uh, be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Thank you. And until next time, send a